This is Control Structure, episode 154 for April 10th, 2019. Big week to everyone listening. In this show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash CS154 to see them. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Orvis, and with me is the other host, Andrew Bailey. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Steve. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. Why are you talking funny? You seem to be going a little fast there. Oh, was I? Okay. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's only been two weeks this time. Yes, back to our kind of normal two weeks. Yes, good for you, Steve. Raspberry. 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 No neighbors! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Does your pie eat your SD cards? Hmm, usually I eat pie instead of SD cards. They don't... SD cards don't sound that appetizing, okay. honestly. Well, if you ever have a need, try log to ram uh, Apparently, this guy came up with a script to basically mount the... Uh, probably the var... Was it var... Var log. Var log or something yeah. like that. Anyways, the log directly to uh, the RAM of the Pi, and then he has a script that goes in and flushes it out like every two hours. Uh, and so the theory behind it is instead of logging to the SD card and writing all the time uh, the fact that, you know, a new web request came in or blah blah blah, it instead uh, logs to the RAM and then can be deleted without causing read and writes to your SD card. Sounds pretty solid. Yep. The only downside is uh, it flushes it every two hours, so if you're actually doing legit diagnostics, uh, you... Uh, it might lose some data, but if you're stable and you just want your Pi to do its thing, then who cares anyways? Yeah, but when you have a few gigs of RAM, you know, and like it's just a desktop machine, you might not need to do that, maybe? Yeah, I, I could see or it maybe, might not make as much. Every hour might be excessive on his part. I'm not sure on that one. Well, yeah, anyways, neat idea. Yep. Uh, also... Uh, apparently, Wolfram Alpha programming language on Pi in the past has had more spotty documentation, uh, but now there's actually a pretty cool uh, set of documentation on the Raspberry Pi's website uh, that shows projects you can do with the Wolfram Alpha programming language. Uh, a lot of people kind of bash it for not being a real language because it's actually pretty simplistic in how it works, but it does have some fun things. Uh, such as uh, face recognition and even a way you can swap off someone's head for someone else's head in a photograph. Uh, more kid stuff, uh, but that's the point of a Pi, right? Is yeah. It's fun for kids to learn how to program. Yeah, and like you were uh, you know, showing you know, the syntax of this language uh, includes images. Yes, yes. The, one of the examples... Uh, it was, you know, var i equals literal image of a picture semicolon. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, in the another one where they're training the face facial recognition, they actually send it off a link to a Google Images search results, and it's like, go train on these images in the search results, and, and this is now this person's name. And so you could train it and then later feed it images and, and get the probability. So it was kind of cool uh, because these are... Th- tasks that would probably take some while and learning to do on your own, but for a kid, you can literally do something like that really fast and get hooked on on the cool stuff, then you can go figure out the the hard stuff later. Yep, pretty cool. So, uh, remember how that uh, NVIDIA created those uh, GPUs that have ray tracing units in them? That would be the video of... Quake we were watching the past couple of times? Yeah, the GPUs that can do that. Yes. Um, So, turns out that uh, AMD, uh, their big uh, GPU competitor, uh, might actually have something coming pretty soon. Something pretty similar to that. Uh, In their, uh, was it the next cards called Navi? Uh, Navi, that's kind of a funny name. Yeah. Uh, I think they're uh, they used to be naming their uh, GPU architectures after islands, oh. and I think at this point they're going to stars, because <laughs> uh, I th- I think their last one uh, was Vega, and the one before that was Polaris. Oh, okay. So, uh, so yeah, it'd be uh, pretty cool if uh, you know everyone had ray tracing units in their GPUs. Um, I wouldn't exactly hold your breath for Intel to do that, 
Uh, but then again, Intel is going to be releasing a discrete GPU soon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and now for uh, some old GPUs, uh, the rendition Verit. Uh, so this is like way back in 1996 uh, when people really didn't know uh, like how to build uh, GPUs all that well. So uh, this company essentially got a normal CPU and put it on a board with a VGA port on it and called that a graphics card. Uh, it does, it's not really all that specialized. So like if you enable uh, like some pretty important features that uh, you, know, you would consider uh, like pretty mainstream and more or less you know, required today that you don't really think about, like Z-buffering, uh, like in other words, like drawing one uh, polygon on top of another or behind one. Uh, like, especially if you're drawing a polygon that happens to be behind another one, you don't want that one to overlap the other one. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, so pretty much with every feature like that you enabled, you, uh, dropped the performance by half. <laughs> that's, that's pretty horrible. Yeah. Um, but, uh, hey, at least it ran Quake pretty fast. Uh, so something like, uh, was it 30 or so FPS, uh, on a Pentium 166, so, uh, which was pretty much a lot faster than what the Pentium could do on its own, Mm. and it actually looked pretty smooth, so, uh, now for, uh, some other old GPUs, the 3DFX Voodoo, which is the one pretty much everyone remembers, uh, it was the, uh, the one that everyone wanted, uh, and it was, you know, smoking fast, and it sort of popularized the whole 3D PC games thing. Uh, and, you know, even looking at the boards compared to that uh, that rendition board, uh, it was quite a bit more complicated. So, you know, you can see, like, maybe 10 or so chips here. The Voodoo is more like 12. It's got to look like RAM chips there off on the right. The, yes, yeah. that's exactly what the, what those are. Uh, and I think it, how was it, like four mega, four megabytes or so, uh, of RAM with these. So you can essentially see one chip is the texture unit and the other one's the frame buffer unit. So, you know, the texture unit is, you know, essentially applying images to polygons. And then the other one figured out, it was like, okay, so it should go here on the screen and oh, the, uh, with the Z buffering and everything. Uh, a fun fact, uh, so the, uh, like, the big graphics company, uh, Silicon Graphics, mm-hmm. uh, the, the guys behind 3DFX were former, uh, Silicon Graphics engineers. Oh, interesting. Uh, so they sort of knew how to build a GPU. Hmm. Um, unfortunately, those were, like, $4,000 GPUs. <laughs> so cramming it down into a $400 board was, uh quite the feat, uh, and actually got, uh, you know, quite a bit of performance out of it. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a pretty nice, uh, both of these articles are, uh, pretty, mm-hmm. pretty well detailed in, like, how the physical architecture was laid out and, uh, some code to program it with. Yeah, it's neat to just, they get very in-depth with it. So, and then, uh, unlike the other one, uh, the Voodoo, uh, was actually more of a series of cards. So, you know, goes through the first one, the second one, which adds another texturing unit to it. Um, and then uh, also uh, SLI. Ever heard of the SLI before? Oh, they had SLI? Yeah. Uh, so, like, pretty much nowadays, that's how you uh, couple uh, NVIDIA cards together. Uh, but uh, 3DFX, uh, I think it was on the Voodoo 2s here, you can see that connector there uh-huh. that allowed another board to be connected to it. That's cool. So that's not a new concept at all. Uh, so it was uh, SLI stood for scan line interleave. Mm. So essentially one card was drawing the even lines, the other one was drawing the odd lines. Kind of like how we do even and odd for, for intros. Sort of. we have interleaves. Okay. Uh, but uh, then I guess they decided that it wasn't really worth it. Mm. Uh, and hardly anybody used it. Uh, and then later on, 
uh, 3D effects went bankrupt, and NVIDIA bought pretty much most of what was left. And then it's like, oh, we have this PCI Express thing. Oh, we can have multiple graphics cards. And we call it SLI. <laughs> so, fun times. Mm. Uh, what's not so fun is a privilege escalation bug. Uh, apparently, Microsoft uh, has their uh, like Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection uh, discovered a... Uh, potential vulnerability in bundled Huawei laptop software uh, says that we discovered such a uh, such a driver while investigating an alert raised by Windows Defender uh, kernel sensors. Uh, traced the anomalous behavior to a device management driver developed by Huawei. Digging deeper, we found a lapse in the design that led to a vulnerability that could allow local privilege escalation. Uh, so that's cool that they have into their kernel developed mechanisms to record and detect and flag bad behavior. Yes. So uh, it this is really complicated, but uh, you know this is this is great that they uh, actually went through step by step. Mm-hmm. Uh, the short version is it looks like they found some DLL that injected code into a service process. Uh, that code is a watchdog for some other processes. Um, that, uh, you know, it's essentially like some process management stuff going on. Uh, so some tinfoil hatters will say that this is an open door for Chinese spying. So, um, yeah, I'm not sh- Yeah, it, they say that they alerted Huawei of this, uh, vulnerability. I'm not sure if they actually, uh, Okay, yeah, they released a fix for this. Awesome. Uh, uh, but on the other side of Microsoft, they're also closing an ebook store, uh, and along with it, closing all the books that it sold. Even though you already bought them. But they will refund your money. <laughs> so uh, this article here says, I doubt we'd accept such a scenario in the offline world uh, with some kind of book bailiff barging through the front door, emptying your shelves because a local shop is closed. But online, that's pretty much what we've created. Or perhaps more accurately, what technology companies have made it work that way. Ebook stores from Amazon, Apple, Google, Kobo, Barnes & Noble all follow the same rules. You're buying a license to read it, not a license to own it. Uh, one of the things I've always liked about Pragmatic Bookshelf. Uh, they, When you buy a book from them, they provide you with the PDF, PDF. Yeah, well, PDF EPUB. And they're like, it's DMR free. Uh, and they're like, don't share it with your friends. It's not ethical. But here it, here it is, DMR free. Yeah. Uh, so there's some fear mongering about how 5G cellular, cellular networks will make these occurrences more frequent. But that just kind of makes me uh, question is like, why was this article actually written? Was it like, you know, just a slight against that? Now, you know, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much, you don't really need to listen for too long before I say that IoT is a bad thing. Like Internet of Things is, a, you know, mm-hmm. sort of like a bad idea. Um, because most people have Wi-Fi in their homes already, anyways. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, the whole thing of you know, like you say, buy a thermostat or like a like a door lock or something. That uh, he was like, oh, the company behind it went bankrupt, so now you need to change your thermostat and your locks. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, you're not outside when they turn the servers <laughs> off. Please, no, <laughs> let me in. <laughs> so, um, and then there's also I, yeah, I didn't exactly put a link in here, but uh, you've heard of Epic Games, right? Uh-huh. The Unreal people. Uh, so apparently, they've started a store, uh, like. Uh, it's pretty much riding off the success of Fortnite. That you know, it's essentially like a like a game store, sort of like Steam. Uh, but uh, like they're signing exclusives left and right. Hmm. Uh, uh, perhaps uh, more recently, uh, Borderlands Three uh, was recently announced, and it's also going to be on the Epic Game Store exclusively for six months. Oh, for six months. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know. I guess I'm okay with, uh, you know, these exclusives only if there's some kind of backup, uh, uh, backup facility in place. 
So, like, if these, the, if this Epic Game Store ever, you know, decides to close, you know, there's a way to get out. Yeah, yeah. I believe Steam has some procedure for releasing games if if they go under, don't they? Uh, they have mentioned that they have such a facility in place, but you know, they haven't actually released anything yet. So. <laughs> Which, I mean, at this point, Valve is sort of trustworthy on that. You know, uh, you know, even, you know, you can say, you know, like, Half-Life 3 never released. It's like, well, they never actually announced it either. So, um, so Chrome, uh, one of those uh, fancy web browser thingamajigs, uh, is getting even fancier. And they will be implementing a lazy loading attribute on images and iframes directly in HTML, allowing lazy load functionality without any JavaScript. Uh, of course, for right now, because this is uh, experimental, it will be uh, hidden behind a flag. Uh, but uh, this functionality is uh, pretty cool. Uh, you know, again, I'm pretty much a fan of doing anything without JavaScript. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, one of the uh, possible uses is, uh, you know, again, more on the uh, uh, skeptical or cynical side. Uh, this could be used for analytics to get around those pesky people not using JavaScript. Uh, because, you know, with analytics, it might be useful to know, like, how many people scroll down the page. scrolling down, yeah. And, and if you're scrolling down the page, these lazy loading images will mm. pop in. So, invisible lazy loading images. Yes, just how far you scrolled down. Yes, uh, you didn't read all the terms and conditions. <laughs> yes, uh, we'll be stuck in that uh, one pixel spacer gif hell, <laughs> uh, which uh, I was never really a part of. I I came along after that. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, if you would like to send us feedback, you can do that on Reddit nowadays. And don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your one-pixel lazy-loading spacer gifts <laughs> used for analytics. Uh, so, yeah, seems that uh, things are going well for right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I guess that's it. So, have a good one. You too.